Look at that. There you've got Lord Seat, Bronze Age Barrow. Here we are. Cor Trees Hill. And Cor Tree was somebody or not. This is a Tumulus. But that is a bull pit. Good morning. It's just getting on to nine o'clock on Bank Holiday Monday and I'm heading out today for a short walk, well, short walk, 11 and a half mile walk from Castleton. So uh, I ain't gonna drive anywhere today. It's Hope Show, it'll be an absolute nightmare. So anyway, I'm fueling up, I've got coffee, got a nice sausage and egg, uh, bacon baguette from uh, the Peveril Bakery and a pork pie and a cornflake tart for later on. So today's route starts in Castleton and we end up going up Cavedale uh, following the limestone way before then we take a right and head over towards Eldon Quarry, uh, a limestone quarry that shut in 1999. And there we head down to Bull Pit, which is a really interesting pothole with a lot of history. And then we head down over towards Neverborn before heading up and along to Gore Trees Hill, which has a tumulus on top, and then heading down to Sparrow Pit along to Perryfoot, and then up along past Rushup Hall onto Chapel Gate and along Russia Edge along to Lord Seat, another Bronze Age site. A lovely views there. Before then we drop down before into Mam Nick and then climb up onto Mam Tor. Follow that along to Hollins Cross, the old corpse road from Edel to Castleton, and then drop down along Holliford Lane back into Castleton Village. So eleven and a half miles 2,000 foot of ascent or just over. Uh, it'll be a bit hectic around the start and the finish because Cavedale and Mamtor will be absolute chaos, hence why I'm heading out a bit early. But anyway, less of that, and I'm going to crack on with a walk and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Cavedale, a limestone gorge, cut by a river. The limestone was formed about 300 million years ago. And uh, the river started cutting through it and then it went underground, cut out a cavern, and then that collapsed, which formed this. But this used to be an arch until about 200 years ago. So we're heading up here, find a limestone way for it. a little wren on the top there, I hope I caught that on camera because the rain wrens are like, <laughs> they just always seem to, quite, I think they've got one of the loudest songs of a bird, maybe apart from, I think the gold press is the smallest, but I think the wren per size is the largest or loudest um, bird song in the UK certainly. But yeah, top of Cave Dale now, took a few shots coming up there past Peveril Castle, the Norman Castle, if you want to know more about that, I've done a video on that elsewhere, follow the link. But essentially, uh, it's called Peveril after William Peveril, who was allegedly the bastard son of William the Conqueror. But anyway, the full history of that, that was built somewhere between 1066 and 1086. So yeah, just find the limestone way now. So like I said earlier, it's about 11 and a half miles, 2,000 foot. So just trying to push myself a little bit more. I've been doing sort of walks of eight, nine miles quite comfortably. So I want to start to up the distance I'm hopefully going to be out with a few of the guys on social media over the next couple of months and uh, some of them are a lot fitter than me so I want to keep in shape, I don't want to be lagging behind the fat man at the back. <laughs> but yeah, so that's where we're headed today, weather's looking good, uh, no rain forecast, just cloud, be out for about five and a half hours, maybe a little bit more with filming and whatever and then head back home. So yeah, it'll be a nice bank holiday that. 
this will help shake the cobwebs off from uh, <laughs> then if you saw my drunken doorbell uh, shot at all I'll put a clip in now but yeah I uh, caught myself on the ring doorbell uh, the missus was away at her daughter's and uh, I was unsupervised for the night <laughs> so I'll put it that way but anyway yeah so we're gonna crack on up here now follow the limestone way and then head over to the north this is a new footpath over to dirt low so it's not on the ordnance survey maps i've only seen it on here since i've noticed the style through off dirt low rake but a quick cut over there some cracking views okay, i've done it on a few walks now uh, after work in the evenings and yeah you're over dirt low onto dirt low rake which cuts out this big sort of uh, elbow you have to do if you were looking at speed and whatever but we're going to carry on heading towards Bradwell Moor and originally I was going to go up to the trig there but I've done that so many times um, so I thought I'd walk across the bottom of Old and Quarry and be going to see if that penis shaped graffiti is still there have a look at that and then take a slightly different route around a few places I've not really walked around here so that's the plan and uh, yeah we'll carry on heading up to the very top of here you can just see windhill there so just realized my bloody phone hadn't synced the outdoor active map they've got the old route on it <laughs> now, i know where i'm going but if i can get a signal i can resync it so i've made some changes to it anyway not to worry it's a forlorn looking gate most of you probably if you watch my channel probably watch someone called Hayes Outdoors and he's got a group all around gates and locks and latches but that's seen some hammer hasn't it look at that sad really but I bet you could tell a few tales a stunning view across towards Wenhill there quite windy today we're in a sheltered spot here at the moment so I can talk a bit but there's a bit of a weather front coming in so it's going to rain for the next couple of days and start to warm up again for the weekend so yeah really interesting that sort of thing because you can normally tell normally if you start to get wind speeds picking up or it gets turbulent and gusty normally indicator of a weather front and there's loads of signs i mean i'm no bloody expert by any stretch but um i'm reading a few books on it i find quite fascinating and you know you can predict looking at the clouds and the wind and what's happening whether it's probably going to be a cold front or a warm front uh, on the fronts is where you get all the turbulence you know, you've got hot air and cold air and bumping together and things like that so it's a fascinating topic but the sort of signs around you in nature that tell you and then even more fascinating is when you get into talking about local micro weather like a little hillock like over there a little hillock will cause disturbances in the wind and if you go in and out of a wood you get temperature differences stuff like that so yeah fascinating topic I mean that's all people used to have to go on didn't it before weather forecasting so you know how much sort of knowledge has been lost over the years and all these wives old wives tales uh, some of them is an element of truth but anyway less of that prattling on we're going to head up to just over here now to go through this gate which is a bit newer yeah they've renewed all the signs here so which is could hardly read some of the others but Baffham Gate that's the old Roman road there's a cop that way Herdlow, Castleton, Dirtlow which we spoke about but we're heading over here and then we're going to veer off over the hill towards Eldon Hill and the quarry cut down that way so yeah um, it's harder to get quieter now once you pass Cavedale quietens off it'll pick up when I get onto Russia Pedge and when I get to Mamtor it'll be horrendous um, I might do what Tramp and the, Steve from Tramp in the Hills, if you ever watch his channel, he, he's a good guy, yeah, he's got some cracking walks, he's got a good dry sense of humour as well, but he went up Mam Tor to try and, and did the uh, Great Ridge and tried to count the number of people and uh, I think he got distracted and gave up, but he said he wasn't sure, it was maybe a thousand, and I tell you what, I haven't been up there when it's busy, I can well believe it. We're going to crack on down here now, when we can work out how to open a gate. So we're just coming up to the Sliverston mine now, which I've talked about before. But that's a big old mine on the right hand side here, going back to around the 17th century, I believe, if I remember rightly. 17th, 18th century, a huge mine. Apparently there's still some kit left over there, an old sort of beam engine type thing. So 
one day I'll go and have a wander. But yeah, I've also got some stunning views. Mam Tor, see the back of Kinder Scout there, up over towards Derwent Edge. Um, Wind Hill, got Bamford and Stanage Edge over there, and then back down over towards Dirt Low. So getting to the highest point on this bit, then we're going to drop down to the quarry, and then we'll get views of the other side, rush up edge, and uh, where we're headed later, and probably over towards Coombs Moss and stuff like that. But yeah, starting to, like I said earlier, I do repeat myself, it's a lot quieter now. Ugh, get through this squeeze style. All stars are a squeeze when you're my size. <laughs> but yeah, good to get back out. Uh, I've been out for a little while. You know, last time I was out, I did a camp. So, I did a camp about once a month, I think. And then, uh, yeah, go out on the walks in between. Uh, my missus now has weekends off, which is good. So, uh, probably won't get out as much. But I'll still get out, do my walks, do some of the week in the evenings, maybe do a series of those. I do quite regularly go out two or three times in a week, just for maybe an hour or two. Probably do about four miles or so after work just to unwind and lose a lose a bit of the old poundage <laughs> but yeah so uh, I'll probably start filming a bit of those you can see over there just behind me people on Bradwell Moor Trig I believe I remember right that's an Ethel I might do a camp over there because that's not a bad spot and it's a bit quieter over there so uh, again I've been up there numerous times oh we've got a sheep out up here <laughs> Them things will get out anywhere, won't they? And then also in the distance there, uh, you can see Elden Hill, which we were up not long ago. But yeah, you could just do walks from Castleton, you know. I am doing a guidebook. Um, for those who follow me on Facebook, I haven't forgot. I've done a few different routes in there now, so that's taking shape. And then we'll see about, I think it's gonna take me a while to do, squeezing it in with everything else like work and uh, you know all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. And uh, I've also got an article that's going to be published in an online magazine soon about um, those stupid cairns on Mamtor. <laughs> so I think their editor's looking good at the moment, but that might get published soon. It's only an online magazine, but you know, it's got quite a good reach. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. If they're up there today, I'll see if uh, I might just restore some of them to their natural state if somebody hasn't beaten me to it. So love this old track this used to be a track that uh, this is all quarries and whatever around here quarries and lead mines so they would take the stone to and from here um, bet there's some tales back then mate about what got up to on these sites but you can see the size of this look at all the all these sort of spoil mounds it's a huge site but yeah there's an engine pit there apparently still hello mr sheep oh you're a bit lame no, don't try and jump over the fence, that's probably why you're hurt anyway. Yeah, it's a bit lame, that sheep. Probably jumped over the bloody fence and I'll report that. Um, there's a few local groups you can put it on and they'll normally get hold of the farmer. So they can come out and do what they need to do. Whatever that might be. <laughs> I've got some companions, I feel like a shepherd. <laughs> I can't get past them anywhere because like it's too narrow. So I'm just, uh, probably heard them back down here. And there's a gate here and they can get off to the left, I think. Was it Clarkson said the sheep just try and find the most stupidest ways to die. So yeah, we're coming up to a bit of a bigger space here. So I should be able to skirt around them without spooking them too much. I suspect they've come out of this field here to the left. So I'll just come around to the right. And then, uh, and now you got out of there, pal. I don't think you two guys know either, do you? Anyway, I'll see you escapees later. Staple food for anyone who does a bit of walking. Jelly babies. Nice little energy boost. So I'm gonna have a couple of them. 
getting energy up. I don't know why. I had a sausage and bacon cob and a massive coffee before I came out, but just feeling a bit like I need a bit of energy. <laughs> so, yeah, down to uh, a really interesting pothole next. It freed me when I saw it on the map. What I saw on the map was Bull Pit. Anyway, we'll find out about, more about Bull Pit when we get there. A really good view of Oldham Quarry there. Um, I did a video on that a while back, so I'll put a link to that up above as usual. But yeah, stunning views. I'm pretty certain I saw a bird of prey in here. Now, whether that was a peregrine or not, I don't know, but it certainly had the hallmarks of one. Although, I don't think there's many meant to have roosted up here for a long time, but you never know. I can't see that dick sculpture anywhere that was down in the bottom there. But yeah, stunning, huge quarry that. Huge quarry. But we're going to skirt along the edge of that now, down towards the road. This is the old ragwort, which is a bit sort of controversial. As some people think, you know, you shouldn't, you should eradicate it wherever you need to, because it's damaging to, to wildlife like horses and cattle and whatever, but I'm a bit 50-50 on it. You know, I've seen lots of it around this year. A lot of people aren't removing it, you know. I think it's more dangerous if you make hay out of the field, I think, if it gets chopped up into that, because you know, animals won't eat something that's harm, harmful to them. But uh, it's a gorgeous looking plant though. Well, there's a lot of it around this year. I think all this no mow may, which is really good. And I think that even some people went into June, um, you know, it made a big difference. And uh, eventually, after all that rain, the, the butterflies and stuff like that came out. But yeah, just passing along the side of Olden Quarry now, look at that. Fantastic. I know it's a bit of a scar, but it's still impressive, isn't it? I can't remember when this shot, I've got in the back of my head, either the 60s or the 20s, but um, like I say, I've done a video on it before, so I'll put a link for that and you can go and watch that and learn all about it. But yeah, it's a big old site. We're heading here, you can see the road now. I'm just going to go through a field of cows, which is always good fun. I think we actually might skirt around that. I think we come around here and the uh, giant's holes over there, so this whole area is just full of cave systems and the place we're going now is uh, one of those potholes, but uh, more on that when we get there. Some cows and the babies there, they all came charging down that hill and I thought, what's going on there? And then there was someone walking a dog up here, so I suspect we'd seen a dog. So, you know, you can see why you hear about these people getting killed by cows when they have dogs. Because they all came charging down here, mate, and they weren't messing about. And they're big old lumps. But yeah, some beauties in there. In there. Anyway, catch you later, mate. We're following the road. That's a short little path up to the nature reserve at Oldham Pond, a permissive path, which means, you know, whatever the landlord wants to give you permission, you can, but they can remove it if they so desire. But, you know, it looks pretty permanent there, doesn't it? So, you know, yeah, let's take a wander up there sometime, but not today. We've got 11 and a half miles to cover and we haven't done that many yet. <laughs> we're probably about maybe three mile in, I think. Here's some, I got this wrong. I thought these were dog roses, but they're not. I think it's bindweed. It's like a vine, but some beautiful flowers on it. So yeah, onto the main road now, a bit of road walking. Shetland cows, they're really Shetland ponies, but uh, they seem to have Locked it so you can't get in. Not sure why that is. That's Oldham Pond. It's like a little nature reserve. And it's the other end of this permissive path we saw a minute ago. But uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. Must be a reason. Anyway, we're just going to carry on down here along the road and get a footpath. Right, this is it. Bull pit. You see the ladders down there. You get down there, maybe down there, but that's a bit of a scramble. <laughs> yes, a bull pit is a quite a deep pothole. I'll let you know how deep, I can't remember now. But the interesting thing about this place is 
They've done some excavations in here and they've found lots of remains. So they've found domestic cattle, cows, you know, sheep, dogs. They've also found red deer, wolves, and actually some human remains spanning from about 600 years ago to 1900 years ago. So the wolves, when they've radiocarbon data, the sort of bones that they found, they were sort of around the 1450s when this was a whole uh, peak hunting forest. And that's what they reckon they were, that uh, at that time used to have wolf trappers who were paid to trap wolves, kill them. Put them down here, or trapped them down here, one of the two. And then the human remains go back to about 1 to 2 AD. So who would they be? It could be ancient Britons, it could be Romans. But that's bull pit. Threw me at first when I saw bull pit. There's a bull ring over at Dove Holes, which is like an old henge. And I wasn't sure if it was something like that, but no, the whole series of But well, that is a bull pit. So this is a concessionary footpath. I'm not quite sure what the difference between concessionary and permissive is. If you know, drop, on the, drop it in the comments. I'll find out as well. Again, there's a warning about this, these cattle. So we can either go up there, but I think we head off down towards the right. We've rerouted this footpath. If you look at the map, it should be down the left-hand side of this wood, but it's sort of going down the right-hand side here on this track. So, and that's the only sign of a footpath, so I don't know if they've rerouted it. They said you can go straight on or up there. Let's just see where we get to. We might just reroute back around. People do that quite often, but we'll see. Yeah, it's been rerouted, look. Um, we should do occasionally. It used to come along here before, but uh, now it comes through here. So we're heading across this field. concessionary footpath again so I can see it heading off over there well that was a bit of a <laughs> the signposts are a bit misleading there so these concessionary footpath ones which I couldn't see on a map and I thought was the one I was meant to be on yeah, the one that I was meant to be on looks like all the signposts have been removed so anyway I found the stars now on the route just past the side of this farm onto the road down there and then we're heading over down that way. We're now in Peridale, which is a gorgeous little dale. You can follow that down to Peak Forest. It's a nice little cut through. I've used it a few times. Some lovely little barns here. It's a lovely old barn now, isn't it? It's all these old buildings. Look at that lovely old doorway. Actually, that's got a date in it. 17. 1790, no, 1784. See it, 1784. I was going to say 17th, 18th century, looking at it. Well, I don't know much about them, but it's in good nick. Beautiful, beautiful old barn, that. I hope it stays that way. Doesn't get converted into one of these fucking holiday homes. So yeah, we're going up along that tree line. There's some cows up there, but they're in a separate field, so. There should be a footpath and then we've got a bit of a steep climb up over there. Uh, if we get a chance we'll go and tap out on Gortridge Hill. But if not, 
you know, will, uh, or not. Whatever that meant, crap English. Eldon Hill up there. So yeah, glorious. They're chunky little lambs, I don't know what breed they are. I should do some digging. They were hiding down here, three of them with a mum. <laughs> this footpath's gonna be steep now, I think. Basically, follows this wall up to the top and it weaves in and out of this wood, wooded cops. And then we should be able to see, I don't know if we can get to it, because I'm private land by the looks of it, but there's a Bronze Age long barrow. So let's see how we get on. But yeah, we're going up here now, so this is going to get me a bit out of puff. I found the map, but I'll have a look. I'm having some funny old maps. This looks like some sort of structure, whether that's a, a sheepfold or something, but that's not and then some stubbish in that substantial bit of building work there is it comes right around here I'll do some digging if I find anything out I'll stick it up but for now we'll carry on up here useless style number one there's an old rake on the map yeah yeah disused rake I think it says so that's where they would just mined in there for lead floor or spore or something like that even stone in some cases they were just mined along the seam so yeah ah, interesting hey I'll tell you what while we're chatting I do feel like I'm chatting to you when I'm on these walks I don't really feel like I'm on my own a bit weird that isn't it but I've been watching a channel I found a guy hilarious after a bit, a bit annoying at the start, but a guy called Blot Outdoors. Him and his little mate who's a, a short person, I think they call them these days to be particularly correct. They go out wild camping, stealth camping, but <laughs> they have a few bevies, mate, honestly. Uh, it's really entertaining that Blot Outdoors show. He's uh, from Sunderland, I think. But yeah, brilliant entertainment that is, mate. I mean, they get through some. They get through a few beers. <laughs> don't think I'd be getting up as early as they would if I went drinking like that. But yeah, really entertaining those guys. Yeah, really entertaining. Anyway, just gonna spin you around. Look at this old rake. Some logs in there. Look at the old tree roots there. Superb. Onwards and upwards. Someone's collecting firewood. This wouldn't be a bad little spot for a wild camp. That's Gore Trees Hill there. It's an Ethel. There's a Tommy List. You can see it on the top. I might go up there. I might not. I've got a bit of, still got quite a bit to do yet. But yeah, go head down here. Go to the Long Barrow. If I can get to the top of that, I will. If there's a shortcut over this wall, I'll have a quick trot up there. It's on private land, but you can tap out on it, can't we? But we'll follow this now, and then we should be able to get over to the left where there's this Bronze Age Barrow. Uh, Bronze Age Long Barrow, apparently which will be quite interesting. Well, looking at the map, it's a bit of a shame that you can't see it from here and it's all barbed wide off. And there's loads of cows in there. So the long barrow is just over that little hill, just towards the farm there, Bronze Age Barrow. So what we'll do instead, we'll go and tap out on Gortree Hill. Um, it's a shame that, um, it's with a lot of these ancient monuments or scheduled monuments. They aren't accessible all the time on private land, but that's all barbed wide off. I mean, sometimes you can get through, but uh, no, this is another old rake, I think, by the looks of it. Here we are, Gore Trees Hill. Well, Gore Tree was for somebody or not. This is the Tomulus. This is in at least Bronze Age, if not Neolithic. What you got to look at sometimes is all the lineups here. Gore Trees Hill. Lord's Seat, Mam Tor, there's a tumulus on Eldon Hill. I'm pretty certain there's ones over that way. And you've got Coombs Moss here. They all line up. So where they're all linked in some way. Same tribe or, you know, I don't know, but it's really interesting. So this is an Ethel. So it's another one bagged. I've been on top of this one. Cracking views, you can see. Calburn Tunnel. 
I'm pretty certain I got that right. You can see there were rocks and that in the distance over on Kinder. Uh, that'll be along the Penarn way towards the downfall. That's South Head. And you've got Crack and Edge just in the distance there. Coombs Moss, so you got over towards Shining Tor and the Goy Valley that way. And then coming around looking over towards Sir William Hill Trig and Eam Fulo are over that way. And then Eldon Hill, uh, Bradwell Moor, Mam Tor, the Great Ridge, which is where we're going to be going later, hopefully. I'll make the call when I get to the bottom of Mam Tor. I'm probably about halfway, I think. So at some point I'll stop for lunch, although I bought a pork pie and a cornflake tart. I don't feel that hungry. However, if I choose between the two, there's a cornflake tart, about a million calories in that. But yeah, we came over around the back of there, along here, round there, up here, round around in a circle there. So yeah, super duper. So we're heading over there. Looks like I'm gonna have to go through a field of cows again. There's gonna be a lot of cattle around this bit. Once you get over there, it's more sheep. So anyway, that's Gore Trees Hill. We're gonna head down here, back into the woods back out and then down into Sparrow Pit. Safely navigated the field, are little bullocks there, they can be a bit leery sometimes but I just ignored them half the time. If you don't show them any interest they're all right. One time I went fishing with my mate and uh, they started running towards us and he said hold your ground, hold your ground and he must have stopped like six foot away because we didn't move. Anyway, we're now in Sparrow Pit. So the name originates from the old Florida spa days, spa, row, pit. So pit from the mine, spa from the spa, and a row could be, you know, uh, a stream or whatever they call them, a seam, a Florida spa or lead or whatever. That used to be a pub up there, but now that's some sort of cafe, I think. But this is quite a busy road now. So I'm gonna walk down here a bit towards Pettyfoot Farm and then cut over. I'm either gonna go up the road or across the fields. I'm not quite sure, yeah, wet. And then, uh, yeah, head up towards Rushup Edge, past Rushup Hall. This is Gortry side. There's Gortry side form. Farm? Form? Bloody hell, mate. So I think that's Gortry's hill there, so Gortry side, side of the hill. It's a bit dice of this. I'm not far before I turn off left. I went on the road in the end. It looked a bit marshy across the fields, and it's a bit quicker on the road, to be honest with you. So a uh, slight detour again. Play a little bit longer, but probably a bit quicker. So I reckon I'll probably done about 12 miles by the time I finish. So you can see this road's a bit of a race track and there's a few dodgy bends. I keep having to cross over the road so people can see me. Otherwise I'm gonna end up fucking squashed. So I've just come from Sparrow Pit down to Pettyfoot. Can't really find any references to this apart from Perry Pear Tree. So I don't uh, can't really find much. Nice little hamlet. There were some cavers there just Getting ready to go down one of the pots. It's quite a big cave system. I think it goes down this way. I think there might even be one called Gortry's Pot or Gortry's Hole or something like that. There's a whole system, a whole series and go across the bottom here towards Giant's Hole. But we're headed up along this little country lane now. And we meet up with the, um, what's the name road? Uh, Chapel on the 5th to Castleton Road. Frith, Frith. Mr. Hayes, when I say Frith, I'll say 5th. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, some lovely little buildings down here. So, wander along here. I'm going to change my battery and the GoPro in a minute. That seems to be not lasting that long, unless I've been filming more, don't I? But uh, yeah, we're going to head along this lane, wind this way up onto, uh, onto Bush Up Edge. I don't know if you can see that, just through the trees. That's a Rush Up Hall. That's a late Georgian, early Victorian type farmhouse. It's called Rush Up Hall. They've converted it into a luxury B&B now. Looks like they're still doing some work on it, judging by the scaffolding, but I don't think we'll really see that from the road when we get up to them trees. Yeah, you can't really see much, but that's Rush Up Hall. place I'm sure. You stay there, four stars. There's a footpath through there as well. We nearly at the fucking top over the brow of this hill. 
and over to get onto Russia Page. There we are. That's a steep climb, that mate, for that uh, lane from Paddyfoot. But we're meeting the Panama Broadway. We're going to follow it up here along here to Russia Page and Lord's Seat now. So, whew, knew about that, mate. Be interesting to see how much climbing we've done today. Stunning views over there towards uh, Lantern Pike and South Head and Kraken Edge, Coombs Moss. But yeah, for now we're going to head up here. Never ending. <laughs> and we've got Mam Tour at the end, just for good luck, although that's not a very big climb. Might be a bit steep, but it's uh, well marked and well stepped, isn't it? So, Calburn Tunnel. Remember on a uh, couple of videos ago, I stayed up on Horse Hill Tour and came back here, which meets up at the, just the top of that brow there. So, it's all a bit deja vu. This is Chapelgate, nice bike. Um, like a Holloway, isn't it? How deep that path's been worn over the years. Because it goes back to at least medieval times, if, if not more. And you know, some of these paths were probably prehistoric, like the portway you used to go to from the Hanging Rock near San Diego to um, Mam Tor. So they probably carried on, you know, along these ridges. That's where they used to walk because all the forests and that and bog, they used to walk along the ridges back in those days. So look how it's been eroded over time. I always find that really fascinating to think who's walked along these paths in the past and who's still to walk them, I guess. <laughs> Old and new, that. The old weight on there to keep it counterweighted. That's an old latch and a new gate. Repurposed. So, this is the path. Chapel Gate, which goes down to Barber Booth and Edale, and also over to Brown Knoll and Kinder. That way you go to Chapel Chinley and Hayfield, Chapel Gate. This is Russia Page now, which we follow over to Mam Tor. So that's Chapel Gate, which was the old route to Edale. Um, that's a good steep climb on the way back up. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to head over here now and then stop and grab something to eat, I think, at some point. This is another annoying bugbear mine. Obviously, there's clearly a rock path there, which is going to prevent erosion. And people just walk around it all the time. I can't be bothered or trying to overtake people or whatever it is, but the reason that's there, the reason it's these flags and rocks is to prevent erosion. Just follow the bleeding path. You can see where we came, down the side of Elden Hill there, down the quarry, along there, all the way up to, up through those woods, um, up Gore Tree Hill, which is just here. Then we dropped down, over into Spadder Pit in the distance, and then we came up this road here, so we came back along the road here, and then back up this hill to there, then along Chapel Gate. So yeah, stunning views of where it's always good to look back where you've come from and realise how much you've actually walked. <laughs> Sometimes you don't realise, but yeah, getting some nice light now, but a mix of light and dark. Makes for some good photos sometimes. But yeah, yeah, so stunning views, Elden Hill. You got to uh, obviously Gortrys Hill. Um, not sure what that one's called there. But in the back you got Coombs Moss with the Iron Age Hill Fort on the end. Then you come round to I think that might be Lantern Pike above Chapel. And then you've got Kraken Edge here. And then South Head Calburn Tunnel. Beautiful. Makes you feel good to be alive, doesn't it? I'll take that as a compliment. There's a I think it was a German tourist coming this way and said, Can I get round to Edel? So I showed her as you can get around either Jacob's Ladder or Chapel Gate. But the first words were, you look like you know all the paths around here. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. And then another bloke said that to me at Peveril Castle once. He says, you look like you know a lot about this place. You look the knowledgeable type. <laughs> Not sure, must be the beard fools them into thinking I know what I'm on about. Anyway, we're almost at the top of Russia Page now, so what I'll do is play catch up with you when we get to uh, Lord's Seat. This is still one of the best vistas in the Peak District for me when you come over this edge. Here you've got Lord's Seat, Bronze Age Barrow. But as you come round this corner, you just look at this. Look at that. You've got the whole of the Great Ridge, which is going to be rammed. You've got Edale, 
to your left and Kinder Scout. Absolutely fantastic. And there's Grange Brook Knoll. There's where we were camping last time on Ringing Roger. So we came up there. Then up Golden Clough and then I dropped back down onto Ringing Roger. And then you've got Deer and Tejan a lot in the background over there. Lose Hill, Wynn Hill, Back Tour, all the usual bits. And then where we started this morning, Castleton. We went all the way around the back of Eldon Hill. So whoever this was, <laughs> it must have been a pretty important chap because the view they've got pretty much is a 360, the whole of Edale and Hope Valley. So I wonder who he was or what tribe he was of. Was it Brigantes? They were back then. They found a big head of Briganta, who's the god, I think, in Castleton, and they put that in the museum. And this is where they were. You're on the edge of Mercer and Northumbria here as well in the past, which makes you wonder, doesn't it? But yeah, they fence this off. I've never seen anyone on it, so it's doing its job because it's so eroded. They don't know if it's been excavated. You know, Mr. Bateman, who was the mad sort of barrow digger. Talk about every barrow there is, I think, but I'm not sure if he ever got into that one. Got a few showers to the south over there. But yeah, but that still is. When you come over that brow, that view, it is just absolutely awesome. Anyway, I'm going to grab a bite to eat. Look at that for a view. A cornflake tart and a veil of Edo. Look down to the Great Ridge. I'm going to scoff these quick because there's midges about and I'll change my battery and crack on. Look at Mam Tour. Jeez, make it's like Snowden queuing up to get to the top. I'm meant to be going over that. Shall I? Supposed to get me uh, a scent in, I will do, then drop in. I'm just going to walk straight through. I ain't going to do no talking or filming. Well, I will film just pretty quickly, but that'll be about it. <laughs> Look at the light there and that bow cross Edale. Train going through there. Like I say, we were up on Ringing Roger last time. I can hear helicopters over there. They're dumping loads of heather brash up there to remoss the tops, which is really good. Oh, fucking ants in it. <laughs> Find my way through that lot in a minute. That is going to be fun. See how many stone stacks they've built today, eh? Fucking nobbins. Anyway, can't fault them. It's a nice day, it's a bank holiday. If you're not that fit, you know, it's not a bad little route to get some really good views, is it? But, uh, it's getting a bit like Snowden. Anyway, I'm going to take the uh, bridle way down this bit. And then it's uh, up the top of Mam Tour for the last climb. Just the thought, it's fucking horrendous up here, mate. They won't stay long. Fucking wankers. to the people up here mate, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's tell those these fucking cairns here mate. <laughs> it's a fucking wall. Cunts. That was horrendous, those people building cairns. You feel like saying some of they used to get a load of abuse, but I'll just come back up in a week, kick them all down. What a problem. We're heading down to Hollins Cross over there then drop back down to Castleton. So, uh, yeah, it'll be quite busy from now on. So, there's been about a thousand people on top of that fucker. Hey ho, that's a bank holiday Monday for you. Don't know why I fucking bother me, I levelled all this lot. Fucking waste of time, look at that. That must be off a fucking wall built into Cairns, you fucking cunts. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. You'd be there for an hour knocking them all down, wankers. Right, heading down Hollins Cross now. That was horrendous across the ridge, mate. So many cairns. I cleared them all the other week and there's more there now. <laughs> so we're going to wind our way down here, Hollerford Lane, into the village. So not far off now. And when I get back, I'll work out what the mileage is and stuff. Because um, it lost the tracking halfway around for about 15 minutes. So I just need to work out the bit that was missing. Add them to the other two bits. But yeah, it might be never to go up there again on a bank holiday. 
<laughs> Should have gone to the Hope Show instead. But anyway, this is far more uh, healthier. Because the Hope Show would have ended up dropping into the old hall for their beer festival. <laughs> and that would have gone a bit peat tongue. So yeah, Hollins Cross, the old corpse road. They used to come from Edale to Castleton before they had a cemetery. Go on, mate. Back into the undergrowth. You're a big old boy, aren't you? Get off this path before someone squashes you. You can see Hope showing the distance, the white tents in the field there. Yeah, it'll be rammed over there today. That's why I came walking locally. I was going to go a bit further afield, but no point in trying to get in and out of this area. And there's a stone chat on a dead fox club there. It's going to get my camera, mate. But yeah, that's Hope Show. Anyway, catch you later. on Ligate and Windy Wappens and Breezy Butts. I think that's what it, Breezy Butts, yeah, <laughs> Breezy Butts. But yeah, we've just got to the bottom of Hollands Cross now. That was cool, mate. I had a little stone chat following me all the way down, a juvenile male just trying to get these colours. But we're on the straight now, literally. This is the old Dutch barn. See the, um, equipment on the back, that's what makes a Dutch barn I believe. So yeah, that's cool isn't it? Lovely old building. Just on Holliford Lane now, going back into Castleton. Getting quite busy, as you'd expect. But yeah, see that? They use that to sort of, uh, I think it's used for bailing up the hay or lifting or something like that. I'll do a bit of research on it, but yeah, that is the old Dutch barn. Need fucking bigger bins, mate. Look at that shit. This is Mill Bridge. I bear in mind this flooded in them floods. Look how high it must have gone to flood around here. Well, that was a cracking walk. Uh, that'd be about 12 miles with a few uh, detours and a rough guess around 2,300 foot, but I'll put that up the details. Probably took me about six hours or so, maybe a bit less. But yeah, cracking that. Lots of history, lots of flora and fauna, lots of idiots making cairns on the top of Mamtor. Don't know why I decided to go across a Mamtor, mate. That was horrendous and then back through the village. But yeah, nice little walk that, 